out of practice. It's been a long time since our last video. Don't even know how many weeks Auckland's been in lockdown for a Delta COVID outbreak. It's been, it's been longer than the first one when COVID first came on the scene in 2020. So, um, kind of lost all track of time. Ellen visited Auckland actually the weekend just before we locked down. We had grand plans on filming all these videos and we're like cool I've taken the day off Tuesday let's do it and then Monday they're like surprise COVID's back we're all going into lockdown and Ellen had to go back to Wellington so we didn't quite build up the amount of videos that we thought we'd have but something I've been wanting to make a video of for a little while is a you can see I've got my little makeshift this is actually a desk on its side <laughs> my makeshift rack of uh, things that I've made. So I've definitely got back into making my own clothes a bit this year. I feel like I was getting really dissatisfied with buying things from stores. I found it quite hard to find either the right colour that I was looking for or the right fit or being quite tall and quite curvy. I'd often find it would be baggy at the waist or too high, tight in my hip or too short. So I got back into making things. You can see here it's kind of like a chocolate pink like cream white color palette this is mostly things that i've made for like winter slash spring it is now and actually it's quite hot today so i got quite hot filming the cutaways for this so it may look a bit more summery than intended but everything can match back with my closet for what i can layer i feel like i'm rambling heaps i used to be really good at getting to the point let's dive into something <laughs> We're gonna start with the first one. This is a really popular pattern I'd seen on Instagram a lot by a brand called McCall's. It's one of the big four pattern makers. The, the running theme of all these garments is that they'll be covered in cat hair. Hence a lot more cream clothes <laughs> in my wardrobe now that I've got white cats. But this is the, the M7969. I'll put all the names of all the patterns and links if available down below. Um, but it's this really pretty like puff sleeve crossover really just comfy dress I've seen it so many different versions on Instagram and different fabrics I decided to go with this really cheap pink cotton fabric from spotlight just to try it out for the first time and see what size I needed to make if I needed to make any adjustments I kind of wish I'd made it longer I, I did plan on going into store and getting a bit more for a ruffle around the bottom but Lockdown have been into stores for months, so maybe when it reopens that'll be one of my exciting store adventures. I did find this pattern really big. I ended up having to cross over the front more than the pattern advised just to keep it not as revealing. It's also quite baggy here. I feel like I didn't see many people mention that on Instagram. I think if I did it again I'd either secure it or fully just sew up this bit because sometimes when you bend over it's a bit like be great if you're breastfeeding but I don't have any children apart from my fur babies so that's not as functional for me. I definitely think I'll be making more in that pattern in different fabrics and colors. Should we just go into this one? It looks almost the same. It's the same fabric. I got a whole lot of it when I got it in store. I got this pattern at the same time as I got the other one because Spotlight had a 2-4 deal on patterns that day. <laughs> I'm just gonna look up the number. It's the Simplicity S8837, <laughs> which is this nice shirt, and I didn't notice, but it does have, like, gathered sleeves. I kind of prefer a proper placket for my sleeves, like a button-up um, one with pleats. So I think when I remake this one, because this was actually a test for a pretty pink stripey fabric that I bought, I think when I use the proper fabric, I'll add, like, a proper pleat and placards instead of these sleeves. I think this could also do with a pocket, so I might do that. I ended up actually making, I think, the biggest size in the pattern. A couple sizes bigger than my size would be, according to my measurements. Because I really wanted that oversized look. I'm really into oversized shirts at the moment. I don't really know how to style all of them, but I'm excited about it. This one especially, I don't know if this works with a singlet, but... I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, it was really good practice for that other shirt. So I'm excited to make that one in my pretty pink stripe fabric. Um, yeah, you can see I like pink if you haven't been here before. 
The next top I made is a mitt fabric. I've seen a couple different names for it. I think it's called either the Pua Tank or the Blommer Tank by Paradise Patterns. I ended up having to shorten my neck and armbands quite a bit to stop it from gaping. After mine turned out a bit gapy, I went on Instagram and realized a few people had that problem, but it kind of annoyed me, so I ended up shortening the neck band and the armband um, so that it would tighten up a little bit. The nice thing about this pattern, if you do have a fuller bust, they have got a darted option, so it's a bit better. Yeah, really nice little pattern. Great for layering. I really like this style of tank. I wear it a lot. I layered this one with like knitwear and things in winter, but I'll definitely be wearing it on its own for summer. This top is in black, and I love black, but I don't know if you can see on camera, it's got a lot of cat fur on it. I lip rolled it twice before this video, and it's still covered. This is a wrap top pattern from the Peppermint magazine, which is actually a free pattern. I forgot to mention, this one is also a free pattern. I think if you sign up to the Paradise patterns newsletter so yeah which is awesome great way to try a new pattern company too so yeah this one's free from peppermint i've made this before in a woven fabric i actually made this one in a sweatshirting merino fabric from the warehouse it's really nice and lightweight um, and nice and stretchy so really comfy i extended the sleeves and added some elastic down the bottom on the pattern uh, but everything else I kept the same. I was considering buying more of this fabric to make matching lounge pants and then I realized that that's impractical because I have white cats. I could probably make some in <laughs> a different color at another time. But I was inspired by Pinterest. I'd seen lots of cute knit wrap tops. Really happy with how that one turned out. Next is a really cute top. This is the Elliot top by a small pattern company called Cool Stitches. This is also a free pattern or you can donate um, to the maker. There isn't a huge amount of sizing on this one and if you are a little bit bigger busted I'd recommend testing it first and maybe increasing it. It was actually a little bit too revealing for my liking. It's quite low on the front. If you can go braless it's probably fine but I'm not about that life and you can kind of see my bra um, in this example that I tried it on with. So I did actually add a third tie just in the front to tie it a bit closer together. I also added um, buttonholes. I don't know if you could see it, but buttonholes. So the ties actually come out on the front and I can have a little bit of an overlap between the fabric at the front there. I also, if you can see this seam here, added some extra length to it. Maybe because I'm quite tall, it just came up quite short on me. Probably a combination of bigger boobs than the pattern was made for and taller than the pattern was made for. But it's really cute. I really like it. I also added elastic sleeves. So it's really pretty and girly. I think it'll be great for summer. I actually made this kind of towards the end of winter and it was a bit cold to wear it. But I think now that the weather's warming up, it's perfect. Next, I might go on to knitwear. I've knitted for a very long time, but I've never really knitted much in terms of clothing. I've knitted like accessories like beanies and scarves, um, and I've knitted like baby booties and a little baby jacket, but I'd been seeing so many cool pieces of knitwear on Instagram that I wanted to give it a crack. My first attempt was this cardigan. This is called the Morchella, Morchella cardigan by Whitney Hayward. I'd seen a few people I enjoy their makes wearing it. Unfortunately, I wanted to put this in here because I just wanted to show I'm not always happy with the things I make. This at the moment is a bit of a fail for me, but I'm hoping that I can redeem it by making the sleeves a bit longer and bigger. Maybe you can see in the cutaways, but it's quite short and tight in the sleeves. When I put it on, Nathan actually was like, is that a child's cut again? And I was like, no, I made it. It took so long to make, so I'm hoping I can redeem it. I've got little black matte buttons on it, and it's got a really nice knit structure that I've never done before. I think it's called a cartridge rib. It was nice to knit. I was just really disappointed with how it turned out, so I'm hoping if I fix the sleeves, it might be better. Um, maybe I'll put like a rib down the bottom to draw it in a bit as well, because it kind of just like splays out a bit more than I'd like. I mean overall I think it turned out well for my first attempt at sewing a garment but it made me realize that knitting is a lot harder to adjust on the go if you're not as experienced. I guess I'm more experienced with sewing so I kind of know 
what patterns might fit or how I can adjust it as I go. So yeah, that was the first attempt. Then I made a little vest, which I actually posted a picture of on Instagram. Here is the photo. I was really excited about it. It looked really cute. And then I put it in the wash. And I thought, because it was too oversized, if I put it in a warm wash, maybe it would shrink. Unfortunately, the yarn shrunk. So it stayed the same size. It got bigger, actually, because the yarn shrunk to be really skinny and it looked kind of see-through, which is very disappointing. But then I made the v-neck version because I had some yarn, lots of yarn left in the same colour. And it's really cute. I definitely think I want to make one of the high neck ones again and maybe make it like extra long with like a side split down the side would be really cool. I actually quite like wearing this by itself, kind of like as a singlet. I haven't quite figured out <laughs> how to wear it that much with things like layering. I did try it on over a shirt, but it was a bit hot. And I haven't had many other opportunities to experiment with outfits in lockdown. I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time I've probably worn makeup in maybe a month. I think I've worn makeup like four times in like two or three months. What is time? I'm just doing Zoom calls. <laughs> I did try a vest pattern from Petite Knit the first time I made it. I didn't like how it turned out, so I actually unraveled it and tried the Just a Slipover by Knit for Days, which I really liked, and this is the V-neck Just a Slipover. So I really recommend those patterns, even if you're a beginner. Lots of these techniques I'd never used before, like the tw there's a twisted rib and there's different techniques that I hadn't used before, and the instructions come with lots of great like videos that help you understand how to do things, so I was kind of proud of my vest. I like how it turned out much more successful than <laughs> my cardi. Um, onto a bottom. I think I'm wearing this bottom <laughs> for most of the cutaways. It's actually in this really nice corduroy. This pattern is uh, the widely pad pattern from Peppermint Patterns. Again, a free pattern. The fit of it is really good. I'd seen a few people recommend it. The pockets actually go right to the center. So it's really flattering if you're quite a curvy shape or if you find that pockets kind of sit funny on you. I did end up slimming the inner leg a bit because it kind of makes... I didn't really know this about corduroy because I haven't had corduroy pants since I was probably 11 or 12 when they were like from Urban Angel and they were baby blue. <laughs> but I realized that when you walk around with them and you don't have a thigh gap, you make a really loud swishing noise. So I did take them in a bit in the center compared to the pattern. Hoping that it would reduce the swishing noise. It kind of didn't, but um, I'm really happy with the overall result. I think I'll make some in like a white denim for summer or like an ecru cream would be really cool. I'm definitely gonna use this pattern again. And then last but not least, I've got two satin slip skirts here. The fabric for both of these is this nice rayon twill from Spotlight. I made the black one first. I made it with a tie waistband. Um, this is the Evie Bias skirt pattern from Tasudi Fabrics. I've made this before with an elastic waistband. I've made a pink one before with this method with the tie waist. I just turn it over and make a big long tube and pull it through. Pretty good if you don't have any elastic or zippers on hand. This cream one I actually tried a zip for the first time. Um, it is a tricky fabric, the satin to do a zipper in. Mine did stretch a little bit I think. When it was flat, the zip looked amazing. I even posted it to Instagram because I was so proud of my zipper and then when I tried it on my body and the mannequin it was like a little bit bulgy which is kind of okay. I feel like most of the time I'm gonna wear things kind of French tucked so you won't entirely see the zipper. I made the cream one a little bit longer. Yeah, they're just a really comfy skirt. Again, both of these were inspired by Pinterest. <laughs> I get a lot of my style inspo from Pinterest. I like to make little boards for like the season and kind of plan out things I want to sew. And then I follow a lot of people on Instagram that I get inspiration for, for sewing. I've started a little like planning board for sewing ideas, <laughs> just to keep me inspired. I've ticked off a few now. A few of those are on this rack, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It might be quite a long one with all my rambling about sewing, but I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Try to remember all the YouTube lingo. <laughs> and yeah, I'd, I'd love to make another one, maybe with all the things I make for summer. I've got quite a few things cut out at the moment that I need to go sew, so maybe I'll go now.
go so. I hope you enjoyed the video um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!